It's time for The Verdict. The Verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The Verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The Verdict is brought to you in part by Betcher, Martin, Jean, and Jackson, when hurt people need help. Betcher, Martin, Jean, and Jackson in Ponca City. It's time for The Verdict. And welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. Glad you're with us. My co-host is Kent Myers. Kent is one of Oklahoma's top legal experts. And today we're going to talk about women's health. Women's health issues. And we're also going to talk about report cards on women's <laughs> health issues. Uh, it's a time of year when our children uh, have brought home uh, report cards from school. And some of them are good and some of them aren't quite so good. Um, uh, we're going to talk about a report card Oklahoma got recently and, and see how well Oklahoma has done on women's health issues according to a survey done by the National Women's Law Center, a survey completed in 2004. And we have uh, the Commissioner of Health, uh, Dr. Mike Crutcher, coming on to, to visit with us about that. Uh, I think Oklahoma might be a little surprised, our viewers might be a little surprised, we received an F on uh, the report card done under this survey and we're going to talk about that and see what's what's uh, what that's about and what good can be drawn from that if any and I think we'll find some but uh, we're pleased to have Dr. Crutcher back and we'll be talking about women's health issues and we'll get to that right after this break you're watching the verdict American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. KSBI is giving Oklahoma a whole new way to watch morning TV. Join us every weekday morning from 6.30 to 8 for Hello, Oklahoma. An hour and a half of news, information, weather, and much, much more. Join the brother and sister team of Brenda Bennett and Brady Bruce every weekday morning on Hello, Oklahoma. They're Oklahoma natives who are dedicated to providing quality programming to the entire state. In addition to interesting guests, national news, and the most interactive weather technology this market has to offer, we also throw in a little bit of fun. Join us every weekday morning from 6.30 to 8 for Hello, Oklahoma on KSBI Family Television for Oklahoma. Hi, I'm Mrs. Fixit, and I'm back in Oklahoma on KSBI TV, Oklahoma's family channel. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce our guest. We are very pleased to have back for a second visit on The Verdict, uh, Dr. Mike Crutcher, the Commissioner of Health for the state of Oklahoma. Dr. Crutcher is a native Oklahoman. Uh, he was educated at the University of Oklahoma and at Johns Hopkins University. Uh, he is an adjunct faculty member at the University of Oklahoma College of Public Health and at the College of Medicine as well. He's board certified in preventive medicine and is the boss man of health matters in Oklahoma, uh, reporting to the governor as the commissioner of health. And uh, Mike, we're really pleased you'd come back and join us for a second visit. That's my pleasure, Kent. Glad to have you. Dr. Crutch, let me draw your attention to a, a recent survey, the National Women's Law Center, and it uh, rates 
the states in the United mm -hmm. States plus the District of Columbia right. on health issues. And uh, let's take a look at, uh, well, we'll first take a look at the top five states. Who okay. did really well in this survey? And it uh, is largely along the northern part of the United States. Well, this is very consistent with rankings that you'll see for a variety of health issues. We happen to be talking about women's health today, but there are numerous organizations group that put out that put out rankings on other issues, and and these are states in the north and the northeast that you're going to see at the top of most of those rankings. And I think we realize in in so many areas that health is dependent upon on economic conditions, upon educational conditions, and a variety of other social factors that some states just uh, are, are better at than others, or or have, have more resources to use toward health. So Maybe more social than, say, climatological? Well, you know, perhaps uh, climate has something Economic, to do with that. You think uh, climate might? I mean, uh, it's, it's possible. Well, you know, there's theories about uh, about that. Is the closer you get to the equator, that the more challenging health uh, problems are, uh, and the further you get, the the better health is. But that's probably a, another discussion for another time. But certainly, uh, <laughs> that's a fascinating uh, well, topic. I had never thought of it in that direction. Well, well let's is. look at the bottom five states. Right. And Oklahoma is uh, number 47. We'll note that Texas is 46, just missing the bottom. <clears throat> five, but those six states, those five you see, and then plus Texas are the six that received Fs. Right. What jumps out at you there as far as these uh, five school well, five I, I, states? Again, consistent with who the top ones generally are. These are consistent with who the bottom ones can, uh, generally are. Uh, southeastern, southern, southeastern United States states generally are, are relatively poorer states than the north and the northeast. Uh, larger, more ethnically diverse states, uh, and just have more challenges, I think, in meeting, meeting a lot of uh, health challenges than, than some of the other uh, states do. So this doesn't surprise me too much. Let me ask you about this report card was based on looking at a number of different factors, such as access to health care and other things. Right. Can you uh, tell our viewers a little bit about what the uh, survey uh, tried to measure in order right. to come up to assess these grades? Well, certainly one of the criteria that's used to assess um, many different health outcomes is access to health care uh, for that specific problem. Here we're talking about women's health issues, so we're talking about women having access to prenatal services, to maternity services, to services to screen for and provide treatment for cervical cancer and breast cancer. Uh, so that's common to use access to health care. Uh, it also looks at some of the, uh, the risk factors for adverse health events, such as as smoking, eating habits, exercise habits, uh, and then just some of the outcomes. Uh, what are the rates of disease of, of certain processes in, in Oklahoma women compared to others, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer rates, death rates, infant mortality rates? Let me ask you uh, kind of a related question. I noticed uh, when we looked at the top five, the highest uh, grade was an S minus. In other words, there was no A's and B's or excellence. The highest grade given to anybody was an S minus, right. and yet only six states had an F. Why right. do even the best states not rate very high? Well, there's been a process ongoing in the United States for uh, the last decade or so, or, or even longer, which has attempted to set objectives for the nation, to, to look into the future and see where we want to be with some of these health indicators, and then continue to make progress toward those. So we've set the bar pretty high uh, in attempting to mm -hmm. do that, and, and we're finding that some of those are more easily accomplished than, than others. But the states are being ranked not only against themselves, but against the national objectives of where we see that we, we need to be in the future. One of the ways to combat this problem that governments have, uh, I think, uh, rallied around is more information. Right. Maybe people lack information on health issues. If we give right. them more information, they'll learn more and then they'll take care of themselves. Right. Is it that simple? Well, it's not that simple. If it, if it was, we would all be much healthier. I think all of us uh, probably know what it is we need to do or, or not. I think everybody knows you shouldn't smoke, but yet, you know, 25 to 30 percent of the population smokes. We all know we need to exercise more and, and eat better. So I think information will always be a part of the process. We have to start with communication because if people don't understand the issues, they can't make wise decisions. But after that, I think there are some social issues, policy issues that we need 
need to look at that uh, give give more power, if you will, to to achieve those outcomes that we want. One thing that surprised me about this, uh, I've always thought of Oklahomans as being pretty vigorous, right. outdoors, right. rugged frontiers people. Uh, we always uh, tout our very uh, uh, reliable workforce, which means they don't have a lot of sick time off the job and that sort of thing when we're mm -hmm. attracting industry. Uh, and yet, uh, when they started rating on this survey, exercise, Oklahoma received a very low rating right. in the number of our women that uh, get reliable, uh, regular exercise. Right. What, how do those things correlate? Well, you know, people that work outside uh, routinely probably are those people we're more referring to as, as being vigorous and, and outdoorsman type. But, you know, the reality is that the majority of people don't do vigorous outdoor work as a part of their job and have to work that into their schedule every day to get that exercise in a different manner. You know, deliberately going out and exercising. And, and that's certainly one of the main challenges, I think, in improving the health of the American population and Oklahomans is to increase the, uh, uh, the, the number of people that routinely exercise. And we don't do it very well. We've got a lot of improvement, both men and women, everybody, as well as our children. Have, have we done studies that show that, the, that we're healthier uh, from in these studies as a younger and as it gets older we care less mm -hmm. about our health is there any is there any correlation there between age and the, our relationship and how we do in these polls well you know i don't know that a, a direct relationship has been been shown for that but certainly you have to think that starting at a young age and and emphasizing this to youngsters that they incorporate that into their lifestyle early on and understand the importance of it early on will enhance their capabilities of being healthier later, whether that's exercising, whether that's eating healthy, whether that's not smoking. I think those are all behaviors that need to be uh, focused on early. Inculcated by the family and by the school. And there, perhaps the church or, right. or whatever yeah, other organization. By, by, by society in general, as, as many people as possible that uh, give importance uh, to those issues, understanding that the habits that we develop early uh, are likely to be with us throughout life. And if we want to prevent diabetes and we want to prevent heart disease when we're 50, we need to start that mm -hmm. process when we're six and seven. Dr. Crutcher, let me jump in here and get us to a break. You're watching The okay. Verdict. children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Classic Hits, Cool 105.5. Playing only your favorite songs from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Cool. Classic Hits, Cool 105.5. Are you diabetic? Do you have Medicare? Conditions like this have happened and can happen if you don't have proper footwear. This condition is serious, but Compton Orthopedic can help. Don't wait any longer. At little or no cost, Medicare will provide you with diabetic footwear. Compton Orthopedic specializes in diabetic footwear and can custom fit shoes just for you. Compton Orthopedic urges you to act quickly. Don't lose this opportunity to get your diabetic shoes for 2003. These benefits may not be available next year. Have trouble getting around? Compton Orthopedic makes free house calls. Watch CNN at 6 and 10 on KSBI. KSBI now offers the most trusted name in news every weekday evening at 6 and 10. Get the latest national and international news, including sporting news, business news, technology, entertainment, and political news, as well as the most informative and relevant special reports and live weather updates with meteorologist Brady Bruce. KSBI, Oklahoma's family station, now offers the most trusted name in news. Watch CNN at 6 and 10 on KSBI. SBI. 
Welcome back to The Verdict. We have the Commissioner of Health, Dr. James M. Crutcher, goes by first name of Mike. Right. Back on The Verdict, we're pleased to have him. We're discussing a poll recently done by the National Women's Law Center that uh, had Oklahoma rating very poor on the issues of women's health. In fact, we were 51st in one category, Dr. Crutcher, mm -hmm. and that is eating fruits and vegetables. Our, our right. women claim they don't eat fruits and vegetables, and there's no reason to think they would lie about it. Why don't they? Well, I, I think some of those healthy behavior issues apply to all of the population. This happened to be a uh, questionnaire looking at women's health, but I think we could apply that probably across the board. And as we've seen in, in a variety of other rankings that apply to the health of Oklahomans as a whole, is that we don't participate in very healthy behaviors, uh, mm -hmm. whether that be our eating habits, our exercising habits, our smoking habits. So it's not surprising. I mean, I guess a little surprising they said we're the worst in the country. Well, uh, you know, the Atkins diet doesn't uh, right. have fruits and vegetables. That, your, what's true. your thoughts on that? Well, you know, it, it's hard to interpret how, how the Atkins diet craze is, is uh, perhaps affecting some of these uh, previously recommended uh, eating uh, uh, habits. So we'll have to see. I don't know what impact that's having, but I, I don't doubt it is. We were third from the worst on heart disease and death rate from heart disease. Right. Now, is, is that related, do you think, the, the, the diet sure. and, the, and the heart disease? Well, it's certainly related to behavior. Uh, and, and Oklahoma ranks very close to the bottom when, you, again, you look at the total health of our population uh, with, with res, uh, in regards to heart disease. Uh, so we have a lot of Oklahomans that die at a younger age than most states from heart disease, and that is direct related to behaviors such as diet, uh, nutrition, and, and smoking? Well, not all the news was bad. <laughs> uh, we did have a few uh, good marks. In fact, we were rated number one on a category that, uh, as we were talking before we started this segment, we're having a little trouble figuring out what it is, but it has to do with mental health issues. Right. Apparently, in the questions asked, uh, our women uh, gave answers. Uh, that indicated uh, Oklahomans are doing pretty well in some kind of a mental health category. Right. What is that? Well, uh, you know, my understanding, and I don't understand exactly what it means uh, either, Kent, but it was just a, a question that asked them about mental health issues, mental health problems, and uh, apparently we responded very favorably in that category. And uh, uh, so hopefully it means that the mental health of Oklahoma women is is good, but I can't uh, I can't interpret that from that one question really. Well, there were some there were some other bright news as well. We were seventh, I think, on uh, information uh, from this survey on deterring uh, binge drinking right. among women. Uh, right. We don't seem uh, on the one hand the survey would indicate that that perhaps women in Oklahoma aren't eating very well, right. but they're not drinking too much either. <laughs> right. <laughs> Binge drinking is just one of the indicators that's used to assess alcohol-related problems, the amount of alcohol that you drink long-term, but also the frequency with which you drink excessive amounts of alcohol, and that's used in, in a variety of, of different, as an indicator of, of alcohol abuse. And again, apparently, uh, Oklahoma women uh, reportedly don't, don't do that very often, which is good news. Yeah, overall, we received an F in this survey, uh, finished 47th out of the 51 states in the District of Columbia that were surveyed, uh, yet we did a little better than the last time right. they had done this poll. Is, right. I assume that's a good sign from your perspective. Well, I think so, and, and you know, people uh, have differing opinions of the values of these surveys mm -hmm. and what they really mean, but I think as a, a mechanism of motivating states to do better, to see where we are, where we need to be, and continue to make progress, then they serve a purpose in that. And I think most states are making progress in the right direction. We just don't always make it as, as fast as we would like to, to get there. Well, one thing that's uh, jumped out at me in, in looking at the comparative results between 2001 survey and the 2004 survey was that on in all categories, we were either as good as we had been in 2001 or better. Right. There was no category in, in which we were now worse than we were in 2001. Uh, I guess it depends on where you start. I have right. a friend that says you can't fall out of a ditch. You, know, right. you, do, you can't get any lower. <laughs> but in any event, we're not going down. Right. Uh, right. Uh, there, there must be some encouraging news to you there. Well, again, th that is, uh, that, that some progress is being made and that improvements are occurring, even if at times they're, they're slower uh, than, than we would like. We're moving in the right direction, and you know we just have to keep that up. 
voters will apparently have the opportunity in November to vote on an increase to the tobacco tax. Uh, right. Give us the details of that uh, opportunity to vote first and then right. uh, give us your opinion on whether or not people should vote for it. Well, you know, certainly I look at that when we talk about these issues related to the health of Oklahomans. If we really want to prove, improve some of those, those bad indicators that we have, the number of Oklahomans that die every year, the number of Oklahomans that die of cancer, of cardiovascular disease, and that suffer a variety of, of, of other uh, bad health outcomes that put us in the bottom 40s, you know, that make us number 47, then we have to do some, some serious things. And I think one of those ha will always have to be decreasing the exposure of our population to tobacco, either uh, firsthand by smoking or secondhand from breathing other people's tobacco smoke. And so uh, this is an opportunity I do to do that, and I hope we take advantage of it because it's been shown in every other state that has raised the tobacco prices that you can have a direct impact upon decreasing tobacco tobacco consumption in the population and especially among children, among adolescents when they first start smoking. So hopefully prevent them from becoming addicted and becoming chronic smokers. So you know there's a lot of other issues to consider here. It's a very politically controversial issue, uh, how the money is going to be spent. But as a public health professional, I have to look at this as a true opportunity to improve the health of Oklahomans long term. So hopefully our report cards will look better in the future. Well, how will the money be spent? Where would that extra 55 cents a Go. Well, it's going to a variety of things, and I can't say I'm even aware right now of all of the, the things that are happening because that is, that is a very political issue and, and a lot of negotiating going on with but that. Is it going to be health related yes, issues? Yes, health related. Or? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to things such as a cancer center to support the trauma center, which is another uh, critical issue in Oklahoma mm -hmm. of having a, a world class trauma uh, system that's available to take care of us whenever we need that. Uh, to uh, issues related to to insurance for for I mean Medicaid you know and enhancement efforts and and a variety of other health related issues that I think uh, will be very beneficial. Mike, let me ask you in the few minutes or a couple of minutes we have remaining to tell our viewers what's going on at your department. What's what's hot and what's not. Right. Uh, what are you all doing out there? Right. Well, you know, it's an exciting time. I think there's a lot of uh, motivation uh, that is happening across the state right now to, to improve health issues in Oklahoma. We've been dealing with this, and it's been in the media a lot the last few years, that, you know, we rank in the 45 and under uh, in the states compared to other states in health. And, you know, a lot of exciting things are happening to try to turn some of those things around. A lot of community effort and political action that has taken place uh, in this legislative session. I mean, I think last session, the uh, clean indoor air, laws uh, uh, that are, is banning uh, smoking in, in indoor workplaces. A couple of uh, uh, actions this session that have to do with uh, increasing the ability to enforce youth access to tobacco laws earlier in the session and then the tobacco tax law uh, later in the session. Great victories for public health and I think for the health of Oklahomans. So we need to continue to push on those issues that will promote healthier behaviors uh, in Oklahomans uh, and I think some exciting things are happening in that regard while we're also struggling with issues such as preparing for bioterrorism and other terrorist potential uh, events. Uh, it's obviously we, we live in a very dangerous world today and we have to be prepared for that and we're getting ready for the West Nile virus season uh, which is upon us as mosquitoes start to bite and hopefully it's not going to be a bad season but but time will tell with that uh, and lots of women and children's issues that are that are going on now never a dull moment out at your department <laughs> never a, a lack of things to do mm -hmm. we got just a few seconds left any final comments you'd like to make to the citizens of Oklahoma well certainly women's health issues are important to us and they're a big part of what the health department d does is trying to to provide environment in which uh, families can have healthy children uh, and that those children can be raised in healthy environments and that, that women can have appropriate services to, to assist them in, in uh, uh, you know, taking care of their children and, and having uh, good women's health outcomes. And, and we'll continue to work toward those things and, and improving those grades. I, I don't like to be in the bottom 40s in anything. I, I'd rather see us uh, uh, much improved in a variety of indicators. And certainly women's health is an important issue for us. Well, Dr. Crutcher, thank you for what you're doing for the state of Oklahoma. And thank you for coming well, on The Verdict. Well, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Mike. Kent, and I'll yeah. be back with a final word in just a minute.
Oklahoma's only locally owned independent television network has now teamed up with the market's number one locally owned country radio station to provide you and your family with weather information when you need it the most. You can always catch your weather forecast from veteran Oklahoma meteorologist Brady Bruce at the top of every hour, 24 hours a day on KSBI. And now listen to Brady's forecast in your car on 93.3 KKNG and in Spanish on 106.7 La Set. Keep it here on KSBI, your family's weather source. Bringing out the best in each student. That is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities. Parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. Help celebrate our independence at Tinker Air Force Base on Sunday, July 4th at Star Spangled Salute. Gates open at 1 p.m. with aerial acts beginning at 3 p.m. Admission and parking are free. See the precision drill of the United States Air Force Honor Guard and the Tops in Blue Entertainment Showcase. There will be lots of activities for the kids, so bring the whole family and enjoy the fun, food, and fireworks. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers here to wrap it up. Dr. Crutcher, the state health commissioner, was our guest, and we discussed women's health issues in the state of Oklahoma. He did a fine job discussing them, and it looks to me like we're on the road toward trying to do better on our next report card on women's health issues. And certainly, if he has anything to, to say about it, uh, the report card will be much better. It continues to be amazing to me, uh, and it's just based on my inappropriate or, or incorrect uh, perception but I just have a perception of Oklahomans being more healthy, more vigorous than uh, others in surrounding states, and that obviously is not correct. If all these surveys that we see and hear are, are correct, we are just uh, not doing some of the things that we need to do to, to become a, a truly healthy population. But uh, we've got ongoing programs, this tobacco tax and other things, that will uh, perhaps make some big strides in making Oklahomans more healthy. It'll be interesting to see how that vote on the tobacco yeah, tax comes out in will. November. As always, we want to give you the web address where you can find out more information from our guests. And in this case, it's over at the health, the State Health Department. And that web address is health.state.ok.us. And while I'm giving web addresses, I'll remind you of our web address, theverdict.tv. Go there, tell us who you'd like to see on a future edition of The Verdict. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time. <laughs>